This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you episode 49 of season 2 of the Westford Wardsman podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be reading the Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, December 4th, 1909. I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford in 1909. The first section in this issue is the Westford Center section. Mrs. James W. Pine, spelled P-Y-N-E, has the sincere sympathy of her many friends in the death of her sister, Mrs. Matilda Moses, who died at her home in Manchester, New Hampshire, last week the result of a paralytic shock. It is, when the, it is within the year that Mrs. Pine's daughter, Olive, died, and these two deaths in the family circle coming so conspicuously near together are indeed cause for sadness. The Donald M. Camerons have gone for their annual winter sojourn in Lowell. The Ladies' Missionary Society of the Congregational Church held a small held a well-attended meeting at the Parsonage Tuesday afternoon. Miss Loker, the president, gave an interesting report of the recent annual meeting of the Woman's Board in Boston, after which the first subject in the new book, which is to be the study for the winter, was taken up. This book is quote, the gospel in Latin lands, end quote, quote, by Francis Clark and Mrs. Clark. This book was published in 1909 by the Macmillan Company of New York and is available at books.google.com if you're interested in reading it. Mrs. Andrew S. Wright has gone to Waverly to spend the winter with her niece, Miss Amy Newcomb. The southern immigration fever has taken quite a hold of our residents. The genial Fred A. Smith is the latest one to catch the germ and has his large milk route for sale and closing up affairs to go to Florida for the winter. Cards have been received by the Westford relatives for the wedding of Miss Florence Edith Cass to George Alexander Cameron, December 15th, at the home of her sister, Mrs. Charles Clark of Somerville. Their future home is also in Somerville. Miss Cass has been a frequent visitor in our village. Miss Elizabeth Adams of Cambridge was an over Sunday guest at her cousin's, Mrs. Mary Fletcher. Mrs. Fletcher entertained a group of relatives for the initial Thanksgiving in her new home. William F. Seifer, or Seifer, S-E-I-F-E-R, having wearied of keeping Bachelor's Hall at the old homestead, went to Lowell last Wednesday evening with Miss Jenny McDonald and called on Reverend George B. Dean of the Parsonage, 14 Bellevue Street, who united them in the bonds of matrimony. After a wedding trip, they will occupy the Seifer Homestead on Old Lowell Road in South Westford. Miss Ruth Fisher has been spending the week at Plymouth, completing her convalescence from her attack of diphtheria. Miss Gardner of Lowell has been acting as Miss Fisher's substitute at the William E. Frost School. Quarantine has been removed from all the cases of diphtheria, and as no new cases have developed, it is hoped that the scare is over. At the Calvin Howard Homestead for Thanksgiving were Mr. and Mrs. Charles Howard and little son John Adams of Concord, New Hampshire, Miss Alice from from Cotuit, Cotuit, I guess it is, and John and George making the family circle complete. The Tadmuck Club will hold its meeting Tuesday afternoon in charge of Miss Edith M. Foster. Miss Foster will read a paper on the conservation of our natural resources. She has arranged a musical program assisted by Mrs. Olive Wellington Priest of of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Miss Marion Stanley Carlton of Lynn, and Miss Edith uh, Marion Sweat of Forge Village. The meeting will be called promptly at 2.30 at the Orthodox Vestry and will be open to all. The next uh, section is called Quiet Day. Thanksgiving, the homiest day in the entire year's calendar of holidays, has come and gone. It was a quiet day in town to all outward appearances, but within the homes were many happy reunions, while many went to gather round festive boards in other places. 
There were no public assemblies of any kind scheduled, and if there had been, the weather would have proved rather prohibitive to their successful carrying out. To enumerate in detail the various comings and goings would be to chronicle the doings of about every household. All the young people away at school and those teaching in other places had a vacation from Wednesday to Monday, which was enjoyed at their several homes. Our out-of-town teachers returned to their homes. Uh, Miss Babbitt of Fitchburg, Miss Grant of Gloucester, Miss Lawrence of Cam Kemp Bellow, Campo Bellow, I guess, and Miss Burnham to Essex. Uh, the next section is library. There is an excellent collection of pictures at the library depicting scenes on the southern coast of England. Patrons of of the library are also enjoying two other additions which are much of an improvement. The first is a new magazine rack at the right of the entrance to the reading room, made from oak to harmonize with the other fittings of the room. A tier of shelves hold the files of magazines, which can be taken from the library the same as books. The rack at the top of the shelves holds the latest number of magazines in an upright position so that one can select at a glance the desired one, and for a library of its size, the range of choices is a wide one of monthlies and weeklies. The new, this new feature does away with the crowded condition of the reading table. The next paragraph is titled, Accident. The treachery of the automobile was forcibly brought home to one of our townsmen last Saturday afternoon. John M. Abbott accepted an invitation to ride from Boston to Westford from Walter Carl in his new Pope Hartford machine. When making a sharp turn in the road between Arlington and Concord, the brakes failed to work properly and the machine skidded and turned on its side. Both occupants went out without ceremony. Mr. Carl's injuries were slight. Mr. Abbott fractured a collarbone, cut the back of his head, and was bruised in several other places. The car was considerably damaged so that another had to be secured for the remainder of the journey, which was finished late in the afternoon. Mr. Abbott is as comfortable at his home as can be expected after such an experience. The next section is the About Town section. The winter meetings of the State Board of Agriculture will be held at Grange Hall, Dracut, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, December 7th, 8th, and 9th. These meetings are free to the public. Well-known speakers from various parts of the country will be present. The exercises will be open for questions and discussion. The fortnightly uh, club held a stirring meeting at the Wright Schoolhouse last week, Friday evening. That was uh, one of the old uh, di 10 district schoolhouses and was located on Groton Road. It was also called the Lion Schoolhouse. It certainly, it certainly was stirring, considering that it followed so closely on Thanksgiving turkeys and associations. The next meeting will be held next Friday evening, December 10th, and the committee are preparing a literary sparring match on a live question not yet worked out. Thanksgiving got a lively, jolly send-off at Marshall's Hall in the evening when West Chelmsford, Westford Center, Brookside, and the suburbs of Oak Hill danced Thanksgiving thankfulness under the direction of Mrs. Thomas Brown and Mrs. Olson Johnson. Our old-time neighbor in the Stony Brook Valley, Elvin G. Poley, is ill is ill with the wear of old age and another less attractive features of a of a rheumatic nature. The doctor has asked it to unclench, and it has partly agreed, but still maintains its memory. Mr. Poli's age, uh, which isn't stated here, but he was 80 years old, comes close to the gold-headed cane for oldest citizens. Uh, the Polis lived right next door to uh, Samuel L. Taylor's uh, farm on uh, at the corner of Brookside and uh, Lowell Road. 
The WCTU, Women's Christian Temperance Union, met Wednesday with Mrs. McMaster, with 12 members and two visitors present. After the business program, the president, Mrs. Frank C. Hildreth, read a letter from Mrs. Stevenson, the state president. Mrs. Homer Seavey and Mrs. Janet Wright sang, Life's Dream is Over and the Star and the Star of the East. Two different songs there. Mrs. Bell Walker read three humorous selections, followed by Mrs. Lambert in the same line of entertainment. A general social time for everyone was the final before singing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. I believe that song was sung at the end of each WCTU meeting. A Thanksgiving barrel of fruit and vegetables and a small sum of money was sent to the Francis Willard Settlement in Boston and a small sum of money to the Flower Mission. Mrs. Winship, the mother of Miss Lizzie Winship, for many years the teacher at the Namnasset School, and of Marcus Winship, for many years the village storekeeper at West Chelmsford, died at her home in West Chelmsford Wednesday morning as the result of a fractured skull caused by tripping and falling downstairs. She was far advanced in the 80s. Mrs. Herbert E. Fletcher's mother from Vermont is visiting at the sunny and modern home of her daughter on Oak Hill. Miss Bell Walker has recently bought a new upright piano to add to the already musical tendencies at the Walker homestead. Extensive lawn improvements are still being laid out at the old Levi T. Fletcher homestead, uh, which was located at, it still is located at 120 Lowell Road. Uh, on the Lowell Road at Brookside, Augustus F. Whitten has the management of the layout. The cozy antique bungalow, uh, which was at 111 Lowell Road, of Nels Nelson at the corner of Lowell and Chamberlain Road at Brookside is an attractive feature of the village thrift to delight the traveling public. George W. Bussey has another of those old standby ill turns at his home at Brookside. They never disappear for good, but are always unpleasantly near. The Middlesex Women's Club of Lowell has been enabled to establish a department of visiting nursing through the generosity of the proprietors of the locks and canals who contribute $1,400 and an additional sum of $225 from the Nesmith and Kearney Fund. Miss Blanche Craven, a native of Westford and resident of Graniteville for many years, has been appointed one of the nurses. Thus far, there has been 2,031 visitations in one year. Mrs. Herbert E. Fletcher is a member of the club. The same evening of the burning of Mrs. Reed's barn at Graniteville, there was an explosion in the coal stove at Westford Station that made things lively for all kinds of life, excepting human life, which was of a retiring disposition at that hour of the night. The next paragraph is Graniteville. The fire engineers have decided that hereafter an alarm of fire will be sounded by the ringing of the bell at the M.E. Church. That's the Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, still the Methodist Church in Graniteville. And William Gilson has been detailed to attend to this end of the work. In the case of a big fire, such as the last two we have had, and when there is grave danger to surrounding property, the bells on the Abbott Worsted Company's mills and C.G. Sargent's machine shop will also be rung. The matter of calling for assistance from the other companies outside the village rests with the assistant engineer and captain of the local fire department. The next paragraph is entitled Wedding. Miss Exilda Poirier and Mr. Joseph Couture of this village were married at the parochial residence of St. John's Church, North Chelmsford, on Thursday afternoon, November 25th, Reverend J.J. J. McNamara being the officiating clergyman. The bride was becomingly attired in a pearl gray silk, cut empire style, and carried a shower bouquet of white roses. The witnesses were Charles Couture, father of the bridegroom, and Edmund Standish, father of the bride. Uh, 
Immediately after the ceremony, the bridal party returned to this village, where a wedding dinner was served at the home of the bridegroom, and which was attended by the immediate family. Among the guests were Miss Amy Ryan and Mr. Gorman of Lowell and Mr. Edmund Standish of Fall River. After a brief honeymoon trip, Mr. and Mrs. Couture will reside in this village. I guess that's Graniteville. The next uh, section, next par- uh, or a couple, couple paragraphs, are entitled Of Incendiary Origin. Origin. Much confusion was experienced here at the fire recently in the many patrons of the telephone line all trying to talk to Chief Sherman H. Fletcher in Westford at the same time. It would seem entirely proper at this time to inform the public that the local fire department has an understanding with Chief Fletcher to the effect whenever there is a fire in Graniteville that a telephone message will be sent to him at once in Westford from the residence of Captain J.A. Healy in this village, that is Graniteville. If the kind people with good intentions will only bear this fact in mind, a great deal of trouble can be avoided in the future. In relation to the Reed fire on the night of November 22nd, when two barns were burned, the fire engineers are making a rigid investigation, as it seems to be the prevailing opinion that the fire was of incendiary origin. Charles F. Wright, Chief Fire Inspector of the Massachusetts State Police, was here on last Friday, and with the Assistant Engineer, A.R. Schott, of the Westford Fire Department, went over the ground very thoroughly. Several persons were questioned as to their whereabouts on the night of the fire, and every possible clue is being followed up very closely. The Chief Inspector, Rice, is giving the matter his close attention and says he expects expects some results in a very few days. The local authorities are also on the lookout, as this case will be pushed to the very limit. It means a whole lot of trouble if the guilty party is only caught, for setting fires is a dangerous business. The next paragraph is titled, Death. Word has been received here recently that Mrs. William Miller died in a Lowell hospital on Wednesday, November 24th, after a few weeks' illness, leaving a husband and five children. Mrs. Miller was formerly Miss Melvana Defoe of this village. She leaves two brothers, Edward of the Abbott Worsted Company and Fred M. Defoe, station agent at East Littleton. Minnie Defoe, as she was familiarly called by her young friends, was at one time a member of the old Graniteville Dramatic Club and will be pleasantly remembered for the prominent part she took in the play Octoroon when it was presented in Westford Town Hall several years ago in aid of St. Catherine's Church. She was only 33 years of age at the time of her death, and the sympathy of the people here is extended to the bereaved family in their sad affliction. The next section is the Forge section, Forge Village section. A very pleasant surprise party took place Saturday evening at the home of Mr. and Mrs. John Spinner. When 37 friends of their son, Edward G. Spinner, presented him with a well-filled purse of money, the presentation speech was made by William D. Rohn. Although Mr. Spinner was greatly surprised, he thanked his friends in a few well-chosen words. Music and games helped to pass a very pleasant evening. A delicious supper was served to all present. Many guests were present from Ayer, Westford, and Lowell. Dick Spinner, as he is familiarly called, was a catcher for the Lions last season in the Stony Brook League and is very popular both here and in the surrounding towns where he is well known. The infant child, uh, does, doesn't give the name, but it was Americo C. Coletti, of Mr. and Mrs. John Coletti, died Thursday morning at the home of his parents, 22 Bradford Street. Burial took place Friday morning, November 26th, in St. Catherine Cemetery. Mrs. Ernest Longbottom and son, William A. of Arlington Heights, has returned home after a pleasant visit spent with her parents, Mr. and Mrs. William Burnett. Friends here have received word from Mr. and Mrs. John Pulsifer, who left here for Southern California two years ago. Mr. Pulsifer has been has just finished building a large, beautiful house in Portersville, which he intends to occupy himself. 
Advent services were held in St. Andrew's Mission Wednesday evening and were attended by a large number. E. Hillard of Groton School conducted the services. His brief but impressive remarks were very interesting. The members of the John Edwards Host Company held their regular monthly meeting at their rooms Wednesday evening. After the regular business was disposed of, it was voted to hold a supper and entertainment in the near future. It has been arranged that in case of fire here, the whistle of Abbott Company's mills will be blown. This whistle was used for no school signal on stormy days, but was removed when the building of the new mill commenced. It will be put in position again shortly. Miss Grace Lawrence and Miss Elizabeth Plummer will leave shortly for Southern California, where they expect to spend the winter. That's the news in Westford for the week ending December 4th, 1909. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Westford Wardsman at our website at museum.westford.org or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from a century ago. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.